Hello, my name is Bonnie Burke and I work for Workforce Resource. This presentation is called Social Media and Job Search. So you might be asking yourself, why should I use social media? Well, in a recent web page, I found this information. The title of this page was Guide to Social Media, and it was on jobhunt.org. In 2013, an organization called jobvite.com surveyed over 800 employers. They were asked if they used social media for recruiting new employees. 94% of them said yes, they were. That in itself confirmed to me how important social media is as it relates to your job search journey. Employers use it to post jobs. They can also pick up clues on your personality by looking you up on the internet. Employers can also look at how you are spending your non-work time. They can look at your communication skills and your industry knowledge and also your work history. The three things that I hope that you can take away from this presentation are, I'm gonna give you some tools on a pre-job search homework. It's a document and we're gonna go over it together, yet this will be really important for you to complete that's gonna help you once you start spending more time on social media. We're gonna review some of the top websites for job searching, and I'm also gonna share with you some other online resources. Internet resources for employment, they are numerous. You just need to go to a web search engine and type in jobs and you will get many hits. However, these websites, these internet resources to me, are the ones that I want to focus on. And I think they will be the most beneficial for you as well. So we're going to look at a little bit later, the Job Center of Wisconsin's website. We're gonna talk briefly about Facebook I'm gonna show you some things on LinkedIn, and we're also going to do a web search for an employer. Other resources are Twitters, blogs, Google+. I need to be honest with you, I seldom use those. So your pre-job search checklist. To me, this is gonna be really important to have this information ready before you start social media and online job searching. One of the things on your checklist are the importance of having a master resume and also a cover letter. The importance of having your references, having a minimum of three professional references. Also, to have a documentation that lists your employment history and dates of employment. We have a webinar that I give you a personal data record However, if you ask at the front desk at your job center, they will be able to give you a copy of a personal data record. That will help you when you are documenting your employment history. The other document that I'm gonna encourage you to have is a master application. On there, you will have all the information that you will need when you apply for jobs online. And also, the piece that I feel is going to be so important is that you have a job search tracking system. A few years ago, when I had lost my job, I created an Excel spreadsheet that I used to track my job searches. You can also obtain a job search tracker from the Job Center of Wisconsin's website, yet it will be very important for you to have some type of documentation to write down who did you notify, who did you look up, and what was their response. So also on that pre-job search checklist is the importance of having an email account with a professional address. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. And also, I showed you my list of favorite job search websites. However, you may have your own list. Some of them that I used was Simply Hired, Snagajob, Indeed.com, 
I have to say that was my second favorite. And also on that job search checklist, it's going to encourage you to have a LinkedIn account. We'll also talk about that today. And I'm also going to encourage you to register on the Job Center of Wisconsin's website. The last piece on that job search checklist that's going to be very important is your phone. Check your voicemail. Does this sound professional? And then also remember to check your messages. Voicemail, hmm, how does your sound? Is it kind of funny? Is there music in the background? When you answer it on your voicemail, does it sound like you're really there? Well, when we're job searching, employers do not like the music and the clever pauses. Please, one of my personal pet peeves is when I hear a voicemail that says, I'm either on the phone or away from my desk. Well, duh, you would have picked up the phone if you were there. So I'm going to encourage you to say also, do not say you have reached and then say your phone number. They have your phone number. You don't need to tell them it again. I'm going to give you an example then of what to say. So how does this sound? So this could be your new voicemail while you're job searching. You have reached the voicemail of Bonnie Burke or fill in your blank. Please leave your name and phone number. Period. Brief. Simple. Right? You've reached the voicemail of, please leave your name and phone number. Another tip, and I'm going to share with you, I am terrible about checking my messages. Just ask my adult children. But when we are job searching, it's very important to check those messages daily. When we think of social media, I know a lot of people become nervous because of online security issues. So a couple of tips that I'm going to share with you. First of all, when you are on a website and if you're filling out an application, be very, very careful about giving out your driver's license or your social security number. If it is not required, do not put it down. There are a couple of tips that you will be able to find later that's going to show you if a website is secure. For an example, look at this HTTP um, address. The S on that address will tell you that it's a secure site. On secure sites, you'll also see a little icon of a padlock. So think twice before you give personal information on the internet. Reputable employers will not require you to pay money nor offer you a job on the internet. The other piece, if you find an employer that you're not familiar with, but you're interested in, you can use the internet to check out the employer. You can go to the Better Business Bureau's website and type in their name, or you could also look them up in the Department of Ag, Trade, and Consumer Protection, depending on if they do that type of business. Or also, if you want to find out if an employer is financially sound, if that employer is on the New York Stock Exchange, you can go to annualreports.com, look up that employer, and you will get to see their annual financial report. So, protect your online information and check out that employer. I have to share with you, one of my favorite websites for job searching is actually the Job Center of Wisconsin. If you are receiving an unemployment, you are already on this website. However, do you know of the amazing resources? If not, spend some time under their Job Seekers tab. In that section of their website, you are going to be able to search for jobs in your area and also in the location that where you want to work. If you are looking for a specific type of job, this website will email you when those jobs become available. On the Job Center Wisconsin's website, you're also going to be able to create a resume. With that resume, employers will be able to do a match. If they have a job opening and they're looking for the same skills and experience that you have, they are going to be able to see your resume. 
However, don't worry, they will not be able to see your contact information until you are sent an email and asked for your permission. The other piece that I love about this website are their online workshops. They have assessments that you can take. You can look at the labor market in your area from Skills Explorer to WorkNet. Definitely a great website to spend some time on. Another handout that I have for you is a handout that's going to list numerous internet websites. Not only will it have the Simply Hired and the Indeed and the Snag a Job, it will also have links to numerous county websites. So if you live in Polk County, for an example, click on their website and you can check out their job openings. It will also have a link for a website that I absolutely encourage you to check out. It's called volunteermatch.org. Employers are always asking themselves, so what is a person doing from the time they've lost their job until the time they find a new job? Well, for me, if your answer to that question is volunteering, it will be a feather in your hat, so to speak. So check out volunteermatch.org and find out opportunities in your area that you can do volunteer work. Another website that I am excited about for job seekers is LinkedIn. If you've never been to LinkedIn yet, think of it as Facebook for the job seeker. I'm going to show you my LinkedIn web page. And on this page, what, what I am going to show you are some areas where you can connect with other people. It's a great tool for networking. You can also find jobs on LinkedIn, and you can also follow companies and organizations. If you are interested in learning more about LinkedIn, I'm really going to encourage you to check out these two resources. The first is YouTube. I love YouTube. I can learn so many things on YouTube. So we're not going to watch this video yet. I just wanted you to know that on YouTube, you can do a search for LinkedIn and find numerous tutorials. The video I am going to show you is from GCF Learn Free. This website is going to give you not only some videos, and I'm going to show you the introduction. It's going to show you step by step how to create a LinkedIn account. I hope you enjoy this video. Creating a LinkedIn account is pretty easy. You'll just need an email address and a few minutes of your time. Let's take a look at how it works. To get started, go to www.linkedin.com in your web browser. Enter your information, choose a password, and then click the Join button. LinkedIn will guide you through the steps of adding more detail to your profile. You can also choose to sync the contacts list from your email account at this time if you like. Now, this will make it easier to find the people you already know on LinkedIn, so we do recommend you do this eventually. However, if you don't want to do it right now, you can just skip it. Next, you'll need to verify your email address. To do this, go to your inbox, look for the message from LinkedIn, and then click the confirmation button. Finally, you'll need to choose between a basic account, which is free, and a premium account, which costs a monthly subscription fee. Since you're just getting started with LinkedIn, we recommend that you go with the basic account for now. You can always upgrade to the premium account later if you want, but in our experience, you can get quite a lot out of LinkedIn with just the basic account. And that's it. Your account is set up, so you're ready to start creating your profile and adding connections. Another important piece of social media is Facebook. Now keep in mind, most of us use Facebook to post pictures of our kids or share some special events that are going on in our life. However, keep in mind that employers do try to check us out on Facebook. If you have your security settings quite tight, you should be all right. However, use caution when posting photos and making comments on your Facebook, just in case. The other thing that you can use Facebook for when you're job searching is you can use it as a networking opportunity. When I was doing some job searching, at least once a month, I would post a comment on Facebook. 
asking if people knew of job openings in my field or knew of employers that would benefit from my past experience. So check out your Facebook page if you have one, making sure that the photos and your comments are appropriate for an employer to see. The next step with social media I'm going to encourage you to do is check out your favorite employers. Check their website out. What company would you like to work for? Hmm, that might require a little bit of exploration just in itself. If you found an employer that you are excited about, check out their website. Look for employment openings. The example that I have for you is Marshfield Clinic. On their website, you will be able to click on careers and you can search for numerous job openings within the Marshfield Clinic at any of their locations. Now Marshfield Clinic was just one example, but once you have an employer that you're excited about, I'm gonna encourage you to do your homework. Check them out, check out their website. Do they have job openings? Have you ever Googled your name? You might be asking, what the heck are you talking about, Bonnie? Well, I Googled my name, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Notice that when I Googled Bonnie Burke, over a million results came up. Oh my gosh, I didn't know there were so many of us. Also, when I searched for Bonnie Burks on LinkedIn, there was nine different Bonnie Burks on LinkedIn. The next website that I tried to check myself out on was wisconsincircuitcourt.gov. This is the website that you can check to see if a person has a criminal background. So I found convictions for Bonnie S. Burke and Bonnie J. Burke. However, my name is Bonnie L. Burke. There's three of us on Facebook. So when you apply for a job, you may want to Google yourself first. And if there's numerous other yous out there, add your middle name. For an example, when I started to apply for jobs after I Googled myself, all of my documents said Bonnie L. Burke. The next piece that I want to talk briefly about is email. It goes hand in hand with social media because when you apply for a job online, they're gonna ask for your email address. Making sure that you have a professional email sounding address. And I hope that you can understand, and I'll give you some tips on email etiquette, and also how to attach a resume to an email. When you do an email, don't forget to use spell checker. In today's world with smartphones and we text message all the time, well, with the text message, a misspelled word is probably just fine, except if you're applying for a job. So use spell checker, use grammar checker, read your email out loud word for word to ensure that it sounds professional. When you're going to attach your resume to an email, once again, I'm going to encourage you to proofread, proofread, proofread. Another tip, attach your resume and your cover letter as one document. As an example, your cover letter should be page one, your resume should be page two. You also may want to save that document as a PDF or a rich text file. If you're asking yourself, what the heck is a PDF? Stop in at your job center and a resource specialist can help you. So another tip, attach that document first before writing your message. I cannot begin to tell you how many emails I have received over the years that start with, hello, please see the attached file. And there's no attached file. It happens to all of us. So attach your document, write your message in your email, proofread again, and then put the person's name in the send box. Some other email etiquette that I want to encourage you to do is 
mention in the subject line your name and the position you are applying for. The more often that that employer can see your name and what you're interested in, the more likely they are to remember you. Email addresses to avoid. Now these aren't real ones. I just kind of changed some funny ones up around and I have seen email addresses very close to these. So how about this one? If you sent an employer a resume and your email address was free for lunch, hmm, they might say, good for you, but I'm not. How about hot babe at Gmail? What kind of job is she applying for? How about need a job at Yahoo? Consider setting up an email address that you use just for job search. Great time to make sure that that address is professional sounding. A little bit more etiquette. So when you start your email in the body of that email, make sure that you use the formal dear Mr. or Ms. Make sure that you have say thank you, that you do not use all caps. When you use all capital letters, it sends a message that you're yelling at them. Use basic font, Arial or New Times Roman. Stay away from fancy fonts and colors. Be basic. And also, be careful not to use abbreviations or slang. The person who's reading that email may have no idea what you mean by CBR. Hmm, what does that mean? So spell it out, make their job easy. Another piece of email that's gonna be very valuable for you in your job search journey is writing a thank you email. So this sample is what not to send. So just wanted to say thanks again for the interview on Monday. The office was super chill and I think I'd love working there. Anyhow, shoot me an email when you make your decision, okay? And I forgot to, it was titled for Sub Mr. P. Whoa, it might make them smile a little bit, and at least you were tempted to send a thank you. Yet chances are this one's going to be deleted. So spend some time. If you need to send a thank you note as an email, have it sound professional. So in summary, why is it important to use social media for job search? I hope you realize all the social media resources that are available to you. And also remember how many employers use social media to check out applicants and also to post job openings. So which are some of the most popular social media websites? The most popular ones that I have heard of are Facebook, LinkedIn, Indeed, so refer to that handout and check out some of those links. My next question, what pre-job search items should you have ready? Well, having your resume ready, having a master application ready, having your references ready is going to make your job search online more productive and a lot easier having those documentations first. Also in summary, I want to encourage you to create a professional sounding email address. Use your email, that new one you've just created, only for job search. If your email inbox is anything like mine, I have emails from friends, family, not to mention a lot of junk email. With having an account that you dedicate just to job search, it's going to keep you far more organized when employers email you. I'm also going to encourage you to create a document to track your job search. If you're on unemployment, you're already doing this. However, if you are not, the importance of tracking who did you apply to, which website were you on, and what responses have you been given is going to make your job search journey far easier. Thank you so much for attending this presentation on social media and have a great day.